Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to this video. This will actually be the last video for this semester because we are now on lab 10, which is the last lab for the class. So congratulations to everyone for making it this far and thank you for all your hard work up until now. So in lab 10 what we'll be doing is a distributed database. A distributed database is just a database in which processing takes place in more than one location. So in the beginning of the semester you used Microsoft Access which was on your local machine. Later on you used SQL Server which was stored on the class IST students server. But now you'll be creating a Microsoft Access database that links to the SQL Server tables on the class server. Let's go to the questions at the end of the lab and we'll talk about some of these concepts. What is location transparency? Location transparency means that a user can be using one system and the data on another system is available or transparent you could call it on the system he's using. So someone's using Microsoft Access and they're interacting with data that looks like it's in Microsoft Access, but actually it's stored in SQL Server. So, in other words, Microsoft Access is giving you access to data that's stored on another server. So, number two. What does this mean? Heterogeneous, multi-site, single-site data, distributed model. So, what does heterogeneous mean? That just means using more than one product. In our case, Microsoft Access and Microsoft Server, SQL Server. Multi-site processing means the different parts of the database are stored in different places. So the Microsoft Access components are stored on your local computer, but the server piece where the data is stored is stored on the class SQL Server, which is housed in the iSchool. And finally, single-site data what that means is all the data is stored in just one place, which is the SQL Server class server in the iSchool. If you have any questions on those concepts, you can let me know. But let's jump right in to what we actually need to do. The first thing we need to do is create a new access database and link it to SQL Server. How do we do this? Launch Microsoft Access. pick blank database. Let's call this lab 10. Now normally what you do is that you would start adding tables, filling them with data and so on. But we're not going to create the tables and add the data here because the data we'll work with already exists in the SQL Server database. So instead of creating tables, we'll go to external data and ODBC database. So ODBC means open database connectivity. It's just a protocol that's used to let databases communicate with each other. So click on that. Now what we're going to do is to link to the SQL Server database. We're not going to import because import would mean that we took a copy of the data in SQL Server. That's not what we want to do. We don't want to maintain any data separately in Access. We just want to link to the tables. So pick that option. Now here what you're going to do is press New because we don't have a DSN yet. The first thing you need to do is pick a driver. This, What you'll do here is just select ODBC driver for SQL Server, that just tells the computer what DBMS you're connecting to, whether Oracle or SQL Server or DB2, whatever. Hit Next. Now let's give it a name. Let's call this just Lab10DSN. Okay, hit Finish. Now it wants a description. Let's just call it Connection to IST Students Server. Now here is where we need to type in the right server. 
and this is something that's in the lab manual. I believe it's 1433. We use SQL Server authentication. This is where you'll type in that username and password you use to connect to SQL Server. No, you want to change the default database to the database with your name on it. And then finally here you just hit finish, test data source, it's good. So you've now successfully set up a connection. Now it's going to ask you to enter your password again. You'll find as you work on this lab, it will quite often ask you to re-enter your password. Kind of annoying. I would think it could at least save it for this session. Now, what is it showing you? It's actually showing you all the tables in the SQL Server. What are all these things? These are all system tables. These are tables that exist in SQL Server that you don't even have to create. But we're not going to worry about those. Let's just look at the tables we care about. Now in your lab, you'll be dealing with the tables from Lab 8. Specifically, I believe these are the five you'll need to add by hitting OK. However, for this example, we're going to work with different tables. I'm going to do some examples with our client consultant project database that we did with lab 5, 6, and 7. So for that, we need project, project time, company, consultant, consultant project, consultant title. So again, when you do your labs, pick the lab 8 tables. But for my demonstration, I'm using these tables. So hit OK. And what it's doing is it's communicating with SQL Server and getting the structure of those tables and listing them here. Now, you see these little arrows and globes that means these tables are not stored in SQL, or I'm sorry, in Access. That means they're actually s stored in SQL Server, but we have a link to them. However, doesn't mean we can't look at the data, right? So if I were to say select star from company, hit run. So here's my four companies and here's the same four. Now just to show that this data is being stored in the same place, what would happen if I change something? Like let's change from Paul to Joe. Okay. Now if I go back here, see how it says Paul? Let's refresh. Oop, now it's Joe. So both my SQL Management Studio and Access are pointing to the same table. So now, what do I want to do? Well, the first thing listed in your lab is to create a master detail form. So that's not a type of form we've done yet for any of the other access labs. So let's go through that process. You're going to go to Create, Form Wizard. Now in this case, I think what I'll do is I will create a master detail form in which the master level is for companies and the detail level is for projects for that company. So I'm just going to add everything here. Now when you create your master form, don't worry about the subform yet, the detail level. Just add everything in that master table which is company. Go with the default there and then let's call this company form just to follow a better naming convention and hit finish. And that's pretty easy. So that's the master part of our form. Why don't we tweak the design a little bit? Now 
maybe give it a better title. Let's see if we can drag this up because now the title is too big. Hmm, doesn't want me to. Oh well. Maybe what we can do though is make these text boxes smaller because I don't think anyone's name is really this big. Although the, the company name could be, so maybe I'll leave that long. Let's give this better headings. Just add spaces here. And we don't need to say employee contact first name, that's a little wordy. Or company contact, I mean. Let's just go with contact first name. Just to shorten the label a little. And then we'll do contact last name. Okay. Now I'm just going to hold down this and hit control and click this. That'll let me move it up, save a little space. So let me close this, save it. So again, the reason I did that was just to neaten up the company form. So we've got a good title, good headings. Now we need to add the detail part of the form. So what I want to show down here is all the projects that exist for this company. How do I do that? Well, you're going to go to Design View. Then what you'll need to do is make some room for a detail form or sub form. Just drag this part down. Oh, that was actually below the footer. I hit undo there. Let's drag it this way. That's better. And what we want to do here in this space is put our sub form or detail form. Either one is the same. So you're going to expand this window under design. Find this thing, which is sub form. And now while that's selected with pink there, you're just going to draw a box where you want your sub form to go. So let's put it right in there. Now it's going to prompt you to go through the form wizard. So now it's going to be just like you're creating a regular form, but it's just going to stick it inside your other one. So you want to say using existing tables. Now this is going to show a list of all projects for a company. So that's going to come from my project table. Selected fields. Let's show these data fields, but let's not show the last updated date and who updated it. That's more of auditing information. We don't need to show it on the form. So hit next. Now here's something very important. You need to somehow link the data in your main form with your sub form. So it's just like a foreign key. So we're going to link the company ID on our company part of the form with the project company ID in our sub form. That way, whenever we select a company on the top of our form, it'll show the projects for that company only in the subform down here. Hit next. Let's give this a sensible name. We can call it Project Subform. Hit finish. Now it looks a little weird. What I don't like is it shows it in this tabular format. Or is that called column format? Well, whatever it's called, this isn't what it'll actually look like when you edit the data on the form, so let's just see what it looks like. So you can see this is showing a list of all the projects for Syracuse University. Now there's a few things we need to do. It looks like this isn't wide enough. This is getting cut off, and I don't like how it says project subform. Let's put something better in there. So let's go to design view. I'm trying to select this subform. Make it bigger so it fits everything. And then maybe I will change these headings to make more sense. Project ID, company ID. Start date. Okay. 
end date and status at the end. Oops. Okay. And also let's fix this, give it a better name. Let's say projects projects for this company. And it seems a little cramped. So why don't I move this down? Then I can find a little more room for it here. Okay, let's close it. Save them both. Open up again. And that looks pretty good. So you can see we have Syracuse University, the contacts, and then we have three projects for that company. If I change to a new company by using this bottom navigation, now I see the projects. We have one project for Crow Serving Hospital, three projects for Syracuse City Schools, and you'll notice that company ID is always 1003 because that matches here. If I flip to a new record, then I've got company ID 1002, company ID 1002. So can I use this to actually change the data in the database? I hope so. Let's say we're going to take a look at our company table again. What do we have? We have Joe Cronenberg. How about we try to change his name to Joseph. Remember, you have to hit this to save. You have to switch records. Let's see if it saved it. We have it, Joseph, now. And we can also use this detail part of the form to change data about each company's project. So let's first go to the project table. Why don't we look at project number one, which is this one. So right now, the end date is 95 I'm sorry 915 2013 let's change that to 10 15 2013 okay so this should change to 10 15 2013 and it does so we now have a working form and this form even though it's in access is actually changing the data in our SQL Server database. One more reminder, this outside navigation here is what switches companies. This inside navigation here switches to different projects within that company. That can be a little confusing because you've got two identical navigation bars here. So just make sure you remember which is for which. So the next thing we need to do is to create a report. So in the lab, the second page shows a report you need to create. Now this report is similar to the reports you may have created before in that you'll be using multiple tables, but as you can see, what's important that you need to do is have different levels in your report. In other words, at the top level you show the clients, the second level you show the accounts for each client, and on the third level you show the holdings for each account. So how do you create a report like this? Well, again, I'm going to demonstrate this using different tables using these tables from labs 5 through 7. Maybe what I can do for my report is I can show a report with three levels. Maybe I'll start with company as the top level, then project at the, as the next level, and project time as the third level. So how would I do this? Let's close out our form. Now one thing that's really annoying about linking to SQL Server is that even though it automatically figured out all the table descriptions in SQL Server for all the tables and it can see all the data, 
Access is not smart enough to figure out the table relationships. Even though those foreign keys exist in SQL Server, it doesn't know how to read them. So you actually need to, before you create this report, set up your relationships. So in your lab, you're going to be dealing with the client table, the account table, and the account holdings table. So you'll need to set up the relationship between those three tables using the relationships window. Now I am working on different tables, so I'm going to set that up. I'm going to set the relationships up with these tables here, just to show you an example. So I need the company, that's going to be first level, second level is project, third level is project time. Oops, Oops I added project time twice. So I just click and hit delete. Okay, so company links to project company ID. I'm sorry, company ID links to project company ID. And what's interesting here is you actually you can't click enforce referential integrity like you can if these were actually tables that were stored in Access. Because these are linked tables to SQL Server, Access can enforce the integrity because really it should be SQL Server that's enforcing it. So we can't get our nice little one and many symbols here because we can't enforce anything. All you can do is make the lines appear. And then project ID links to project ID here. Okay, so that should let us track how much time is spent on each project and which projects belong to each company, which will then let us track how much project time is spent for each company. So we're going to close this. Okay, now let's create a query. So before you create your report, what I would recommend is creating a query because the query will handle what data to retrieve and the form, or I'm sorry, the report can handle how to display the data. So let's hit create. Sorry about the background noise if that's coming through. Report wizard, no, first we need to do query wizard. So just leave simple query wizard, hit OK. Now what tables are we going to pull from? Well, in my report, I think I'll show at the top level company ID and name. The next level for project, I'm just going to show project start date, end date, and status. Actually, you know, project ID could be helpful too. So if I want that to show up after this field, I do it like this. Okay, so project ID, start, end, and status. And finally, at the detail, lowest detail level, I will show the project consultant who worked on the project, the project date he worked on it, and how much time he worked on it on that date. Hit next. Just hit details. And let's see what it looks like. So here we have, we have a lot of records because you'll remember I think it was in lab six that you ran a script to create a lot of new records. So you can see here, we've got a lot of hours spent on Syracuse City School projects and Syracuse University projects. So what do we do? Let's close it. It seems like our query worked. Now that we've got a query that provides the data, oh, this is a bad name. We don't need that DBO in there. Let's just call this project time query. Now let's create a form, or I'm sorry, report. And we'll use that nice query we just created for our report. Show all fields. Now, because of the relationships that you established, it knows that the first level is for the company, the second level is for the project, and the third level is for project time. 
So that's really useful. You don't have to tell it what the three levels are. So hit next, hit next. Let's change it to landscape so that we can fit more on each page widthwise. If you put stepped, that's what will show the different levels, each one tabbed over further to the right. So it's kind of like a hierarchy. That's the what we should do. And then let's call this project time report. So usually when you first bring up a report, it looks pretty bad. So as you can see, all our labels are all getting smushed and we're losing some data over here. We don't have the project time on the page anywhere. So how can we fix that? You need to go to design view to clean up the report. Usually you use the wizard to create it and then you go clean it up here. Let's call this project time report. Now, why is everything getting smushed? It's probably because First of all, company ID, that's a little big for just a number. Let's make that smaller. We also have to keep the this in sync between these two areas. Now we can move company name over. And actually we probably can't shrink this, I'm thinking, because we need this heading to show. This part is just a pain. It's never fun to fix all the widths of columns. But it's just one of those little annoying things you have to put up with if you want to create reports. OK, so that fits. Let's make this a little smaller. Just painstaking, annoying stuff. Now let's make company names smaller so we can fit more other stuff on here. So that freed up a lot of room. Now let's bring project ID over, now that we have all this room. Maybe put a space in it. Now we need to line up this data with where we put the heading. This is project start date. Let's save a little room on our heading by just calling it start date. Now we can make it smaller. I haven't found an easy way to get around all this tweaking that I'm doing with the sizes. But if anyone knows of a better way to do it, please let me know. Access is supposed to be smart enough to do this for you, but it's not. So I'm just making end date smaller, and now it's kind of overlapping. I need to drag it over. Okay, now we got, we have to put the data field under the end date label. Finally, we have project status, so that's the last of our second level headings. Okay, let's just call this status to save more room. So, move this over, make it small. Okay, then we have consultant ID. Let's make it smaller. Now here, because the consultant ID is on the lowest level of our data, in our third level, we'll say, then it's going to show up in this detail row instead of the project header row. And the same goes for the project date and project hours. Let's call this work date because this was actually going to be the date 
that work is being done on. So which day the consultant worked on the project. And then finally, the last column we finally get to, which is the work hours. So let's call this hours. And we can make it much smaller. Try to move it over and finally move this over. So we finally fixed all our columns, hopefully. Let's close it, hit save, run it again, and see if it looks a little better. That does, it looks a lot better. So you can see now we can actually see the data. We have the company ID, company name, project ID, start date, end date, status, consultant ID, work date, and hours. So what we have at the first level is the company information, company ID, and company name. This is the second level because one company can have multiple projects. For each project we have the ID, the dates, and the status. And finally the third level, the lowest level, shows how many hours were spent on each day by each consultant on that project. So we have a problem here. When these pound signs appear that means your column isn't wide enough. So I think that's the project start date column. We need to make that wider, which unfortunately requires us to move everything else over. So I'm just using control to move all this over. Well, I didn't actually want to select this, so I'll deselect this one. Just move these over. Now I can make end date bigger once I move this over. And hopefully that will get rid of the problem where the column wasn't wide enough. Let's close this display again. Let's go down to where it had a problem before. Still a problem. Oh, did I make the end date bigger? I guess I should have made the start date bigger. Well. I'll grab these, move these over a little bit. I better move my end date over. Let's see how this looks. Still a problem. Oh, I click on it and it displays. Okay, I'm going to make this a lot bigger now. Sorry, this is taking so long just didn't think this start date would be such a pain. And I'll move this over. Now I have to move all these over to line them up. Maybe make this wider. Let's check again. Although maybe the problem is this needs to be wider, I don't know. Okay, let's go to second page again. Good, it fit. Finally. So just to review on this report, you've got the first level, it's the company, second level project, third level project hours. See now we s here we have a new project, but it's still under the same company. So that's how you create a, por a report with many levels. So that's all I have for this lab. But as usual, if you have any questions or problems, feel free to contact me. And thanks for watching.